2024 Polestar 2 RWD first test, feeling better. With a range of more than 300 miles, the updated Polestar 2 is finally more competitive. When the Polestar 2 EV first arrived here, it was touted as a viable alternative to the Tesla Model 3, the best-selling premium sedan in the US Polestar, which became a standalone brand after a long stint as Volvo's performance-oriented arm, had a lot of pressure to deliver. But the car's range and fast charging tech, two key elements for EVs, weren't in the same league as the Tesla. To address those shortcomings, updated the 2024 Polestar 2 arrived with a longer range, rear and all-wheel drive configuration and better driving dynamics in an effort to make it more competitive. We spent a few days driving the rear-wheel drive plus version with the long-range battery, which delivers an EPA-rated 307 miles to a single charge, and came away impressed with its performance, comfort, and range. In short, this is the car Polestar should have had since its launch. The 2024 Polestar 2 Plus we had for testing is propelled by a single, rear-mounted motor rated at 299 horsepower and 361 pound-feet of torque, with Polestar's updated and more powerful 82 kWh battery supplying the juice. The powertrain reacted quickly to throttle inputs, and thanks to the initial torque shove from the rear, the previous Polestar 2 single motor had a front-mounted motor, it felt fun around town. When merging on the freeway or cruising in our neighborhood, the Polestar's power and acceleration felt controlled and smooth. It proved enjoyable as a day-to-day -day driver and felt much more refined than the pre-refresh car. As far as how quick its acceleration actually is, for our own instrumented testing, the Polestar 2 RWD whooshed from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds, a bit faster than the single-motor 2024 Tesla Model 3 Highland we tested, which completed the task in 5.6 seconds. But on the braking test, the Tesla took the win in a big way, as it stopped from 60 miles per hour in 115 feet as opposed to the Polestar's 124. When it comes to slowing things down in a more gradual manner, the one-pedal driving mode in the Polestar was excellent. Configured to the most aggressive setting, it felt almost like the car knew exactly when to come to a complete stop. And the brake pedal itself also felt strong, unlike some EVs or hybrids that have a flat or unnatural feel. Besides the new powertrain, the Polestar 2 has also received some revisions to its suspension. While we still experience some vibrations in the cabin when driving over broken pavement, the changes have led to substantial improvements, with a more settled and refined ride closer to that of a luxury car. We'd still like to experience more weight from the steering, however, as it continues to be on the lighter side of the spectrum. The longest range 2024 Polestar 2 is EPA rated at 320 miles to a charge, but our Plus model equipped with the bigger 20-inch wheels is pegged to the aforementioned 307 miles. During our time with the car, the range estimate came very close to the distances we covered. Watch this space in the future, as we'll be doing a proper range test to see how far it can really travel on a single charge. Inside, the changes weren't immediately as apparent as with other areas of the car. Case in point. Polestar's continued use of Google's Android Automotive OS with Google built-in. Although it's a good infotainment system, we were let down some by its graphics, particularly for Google Maps. Using the Google Maps app on our iPhone with Apple CarPlay provided a sharper, more modern look than what the Polestar's Google system delivered, and it didn't freeze like the infotainment did at times. Although we primarily used our iPhone via CarPlay when driving the 2024 model, despite its flaws, the built-in navigation is the way to go for long distances, as it shows the car's estimated range and charging stations along the way should you need some juice. We also aren't big fans of the infotainment screen's vertical layout. It has numerous limitations, including placing the A, C buttons all the way at the bottom, so we had to take our eyes off the road to do simple things like adjusting the air vents. Infotainment aside, those cross-shopping between a Tesla Model 3 and a Polestar 2 will likely be impressed by the Swedish model's upscale interior, which feels more elegant and premium than the Model 3, especially the present, pre-refresh model. Polestar also has more convenience features like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We still think Tesla has an advantage over the Polestar when it comes to interior room, however. The Polestar's center console is missing cubbies and space to place your belongings, and when the cupholders were busy, there was literally nowhere to leave our keys, wallet, or phone. Is it better than a Model 3?
Given the changes to the 2024 Polestar 2, it now feels on par with the Tesla Model 3. But the biggest advantage the Model 3 has, besides the supercharger network, is price. At present, the rear-drive Model 3 delivers 272 miles of range and starts at $40,630, whereas the cheapest Polestar 2 starts at $51,300. What's more, the Model 3 qualifies for the $7,500 federal incentives, while the Polestar only qualifies for that credit if it's leased, but not if it's bought since it's made in China. Tesla also continues to cut down pricing, and recently reintroduced the Model 3 RWD, making it more affordable than before. So, is the Polestar worth the $11,000 price difference? And is it better than the updated Model 3 Highland, which is set to arrive sometime in early 2024? We're sure the Highland will take customers away from Polestar, given the long list of improvements Tesla made to the 3. Despite the initial Polestar 2's flaws, it was a decent enough alternative to the Tesla Model 3 from the start, and this post-refresh model is better in every way. But Tesla has made strong moves recently, including the coming refresh to its best-selling sedan and lowering prices. Polestar has a chance to make things better, but a more competitive price point would be a good place to start.